we're now going to look at the fill properties and there are a lot of properties. We've taken a look at these previously just quickly but there's a lot more that we can do as well. I'm just going to select this type and open up our object properties panel over here. Now at this point we're looking at the character. That's our standard character properties box. We also have a paragraph properties in here. So there are two different dialog boxes. One for character and one for paragraph. We also have transparency settings in here as well. You actually can create transparency if you want to on your type. So looking at our character, of course, we can change the typeface in here to any typeface that we want to work with. That's you know, to be expected. There we go. We can change the type size, of course, as you'd expect. There it is. We can adjust the kerning in here. This is the space between the characters within a range of selected text. So I, I can actually select a couple of letters and move them closer together or further apart to try to make the line look a little more pleasing. If we take a look over here, the F and the E are a little far apart. There's a little more space in there visually than any place else. We could select that and try to bring those a little closer together. There's a negative 25 and it looks like it fits in better with the rest of the type. So you can be real, real picky in here if you want to with the kerning. Let's just select our text again. There we go. We have different fill types. All of our center fills, the uniform fill, of course, the fountain fill, that's your gradient. Two color pattern, vector pattern, bitmap pattern, texture fill, and postscript fill. We already looked at those when we were talking about fills early on. But you can fill your lettering with any of those kinds of fills. Now once you have a fill applied, you can adjust it over here, a little drop down list. I can then come in here and choose. I can even choose different color methods in your CMYK, RGB, and so forth, grayscale. But you can get a lot fancier in this if you want to. There's a little three dot thing right there. This brings up a fancier dialog box for working with our fill settings. There we go. So again, here's our model. Color viewers, that's this in here. This is the color viewer. The standard is, is the hue, saturation, brightness. Hue is right here. That's your color. And then saturation is across and brightness is up and down. We can look at our different fills here. There's a uniform. There's your fountain fill. That's your gradient. And then your different pattern fills, of course. We can be real specific on the right-hand side for CMYK values if you have that. Hexadecimal numbers, you can actually use a hexadecimal number in here if you want to use that as well. You can add that to the palette. That's the document palette right down below here. You can actually add this right into that. And it has a name as well. Now we're not limited to just this. Notice up here we have other tabs. We can look at different ways of working with color. These are our hues as a hexagon and then the variations are going lighter. We can do primary colors, complementary colors, and then choose from those complementary colors. Triangle colors. You can actually grab this and move these around and create a relationship between your colors and then have your variations right down there. So it's a, a great way to come in and choose colors that will work out well together. It's like I, I can grab the little triangle right there and pull this thing around and it will give me a set of colors that have the same relationship to each other so that they will then work well together. This is kind of a Halloween look in here. Your, your purple, your orange, and your green. Very halloween -y kind of a thing. And you can do different variations. Now here is going darker. A little more halloween -y in there. Warmer tones. Less saturation. Cooler. We'll go to the lighter, which is the default setting. So you have all of these different ways of finding additional colors to work with. This is our color harmonies in here. Or we also could go over here and choose from different color libraries. This is our Pantone library, for instance. And we can choose from different libraries. And here we go. All the different libraries you can choose from. There's lots of libraries in here. We have HKS, we have Pantone, and we have Roland in here, DIC, Focal Tone, Spectrum Master, Toyo, lots of libraries that you can choose from, and they're inside of the palette libraries section. You'll automatically be taken there 
click on that little down arrow. You can choose to show the color names if you need to. Very useful because somebody may mention they want a certain Pantone and they'll tell you, yeah, I want Pantone 154C. And it's right there. You can just scroll down through and find that. So again, lots of ways in here of choosing just exactly the right color that you want to work with. Let me just go back here to our default setting. Click on the close. And once I've done that change, you can then bring that up and actually change our color that quickly. So it's that, that easy to do. Now on the fill, if I had a fill in here, I could look at my different fill settings, including the gradients. And notice again we have a much larger dialog box for the gradients as well. All of our standard options we have different gradient types, mirrored types, which you haven't seen before, actually mirrors the gradient, flow adjustments, transformations. So take a look at these little spots over here. If you haven't made a decision or you want, you know, you're looking over here, a little drop down list, if these aren't giving you enough options, then take a look at the additional options in there. Also, we can set up an outline in here. Here's a one point. There's a hairline, just a little thin outline. And with the outline again, we can adjust the color of the outline or we can go real fancy again, click on that little three button and it brings up the outline pin with you know quite a few more options in here. Beginning and ending arrowheads if you want to, options for both of those, styles for your lines, all kinds of different styles you can choose in here. Again the width of course and the color, all those standard options. How to handle corners if you're working with corners. So there's you know, an amazing amount of options hiding in here if you know to look underneath these little three dots. Over here you can adjust the underline type of your underlining. Several options on that one. Come down here. You may have additional options down below here, additional stylistic options. These will depend upon the font face that you have selected. Now this is not available for this font, for instance. None of these are. If I change my type, let's just go back here to Arial Black and I'll bring the size down a little bit on that. Let me try 60. You can type that in as well. There we go. So if we're on Arial Black, which has more options, then these options come up. We have different stylistic alternatives in here that you can select and choose from. There we go. We also can adjust, you know, our setting caps, all caps, tilting caps, small caps, superscript, subscript options, different annotation options in here. So just you know, a gazillion different options available down below here as well to get really, really picky. And click on the little drop down list. Even a few more options hiding down below in here. Strike through options and character overline options. So there we go. That's a look down at all of these properties in here. And this is, we're looking right now just at the character properties. But just tons and tons of properties available for you for working with your type. And again, these are all hiding underneath the object properties tab over here in your docker. Click on that, click on where it says A, and that brings up your character property. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.